friends, welcome to Psychiatry Education Forum Academy's updates. This is a section where we discuss recent updates in the field of psychiatry. And today uh, we have this new FDA approval for this medication called Lecanemab. The other name is Lecambi. So this was approved by FDA for early stages of Alzheimer's disease or for mild cognitive impairment. And friends, I am a Dr. Harvinder Singh, creator of Psychiatry Education Forum Academy. I will be discussing this medication in these various section. And before I go there, I want to emphasize I have no disclosures or financial ties with this pharmaceutical company or for any other company for that matter. So uh, this year, this is the second medication in this monoclonal antibody class, or I, I should call it biological medication class uh, for dementia, which received the accelerated pathway approval by FDA. The first one was aducinumab. Now we have licanumab. I will be discussing this in terms of indication, mechanism, how is mechanism different from the first approved medication, how to dose, what to aim for, what adverse reaction to look for, and what is the status of Medicare coverage. So without wasting any time, let's begin with the indication. So as I already mentioned, the studies or FDA has approved this for mild cognitive impairment or mild or early stages of Alzheimer's dementia. As of now, we don't uh, have the approval for other dementia subtypes, so be very mindful. But let's understand the mechanism of action. But before I jump into mechanism, I want to emphasize this medicine is not a cure for Alzheimer. This is a preventive treatment to slow the progression so that a person activity of daily living improves um, and it can have a direct impact on caregiver burnout as well, positively speaking. But mechanism wise, we all know the underlying uh, uh, mechanism of Alzheimer's dementia is one of the mechanism is accumulation of amyloid beta plaques, which causes Alzheimer uh, progression. So at early stages, if you can identify that, or once you identify that, you can give this medication, Lecanemab. This is a humanized IgG1 monoclonal antibody that is directed against the soluble and insoluble form of aggregated amyloid beta. Thereby, it uh, removes those and you see the delayed or slowing down progression of Alzheimer's. So that's why catching it in early on stages is so vital. But I just mentioned that right, this is the second medication that received accelerated approval by FDA. The first one is the aducinumab. How are they different? Well, they both are the monoclonal antibody class. And uh, the lecanemab that we are talking about is... Um, targeting a specific um, a structure of beta amyloid called N3PG. Thereby, it blocks the formation of amyloid plaques, right? So it prevents the formation, thereby progression. Whereas aducinumab is a little bit different, it works on the beta amyloid, but it removes them. Rather than uh, blocking the formation, it works on the next, like it removes them. So thereby... Um, you know, it should have some difference in the efficacy side effect profile. Uh, we posted about this medication on our website, so you can uh, read more on that. But let me know if you want me to compare studies of these two medication. In this discussion, I have not included details of study, but let me know if you're interested. I can go and make a slide on uh, or a presentation on that as well. We can compare the studies that resulted in approval of both and how was the difference in terms of the reduction in the beta amyloid plaques. Now, moving on, the important topic is how to dose this medication and what to do before dosing, what to stay cautious of, and all those factors. So first, before even starting this, 
you need to have a baseline brain MRI prior to initiating the treatment so that you can confirm the amyloid beta pathology. And actually in the end, when I talk about the um, Medicare rules uh, for them to approve this uh, treatment, the mo one of the important rule is that you need to have a confirmed amyloid beta pathology on MRI. So you need to get this done anyway. So that's number one, which is a must. There is no going around that. The number two thing that you should ideally do in addition to MRI is the genotype testing to look for specifically the uh, APOE E4 homozygote trait. And I will talk about that in next slide. The reason, basic reason for doing this is patients who have this um, uh, genotype, they are at more risk of the specific side effect that also I will talk about in upcoming slides. But you have done these both. And, uh, you know, those amyloid beta pathologies are diagnosed. So next thing is after the diagnosis, you have this medication, lecanemab. The dosing is 10 milligram per kilogram, and this is not an injection. I know you see the injection here. It's an intravenous medication. So you have to infuse intravenously over one hour time, and this is given every two weekly. And after that, you need to monitor MRI to look for these side effects. And the guideline says you obtain a before fifth infusion, seventh infusion, and 14th infusion. Because when you give these medications, right, they are targeting these beta amyloid pathology, there is a risk of something called area, or I should say aria, amyloid-related imaging abnormalities. Uh, and let's talk about them now. So, oh, before that, uh, let's talk about the homozy uh, APOE E4 homozygotes that I was mentioning that you need to get a genetic testing, right? So the reason is a patients who are homozygotes for APOE E4, there is a high incidence of aria. This can be symptomatic, serious, or severe radiographic abnormalities compared to patients who are heterozygotes or non-carriers. And uh, the, on the other hand, close to 15% of patients with Alzheimer's are homozygotes. So the risk is high, right? Because uh, you need to perform this before, um, but uh, the side effect risk can be reduced. But you can still initiate the treatment without genotype testing. But in those cases, you will not know, right, if the person is at risk or not. So ideally, the genotype testing specifically for APOE4 homozygote should be done because of the risk of arias. Let's see what arias are. Amyloid-related imaging abnormalities. There are two types of arias seen in the studies. First is where edema is seen, aria E, and the second is hemosiderin deposition. So the first one, uh, the aria with edema is mostly observed on MRI as brain edema or sulcal effusions, whereas hemosiderin deposition is seen as microhemorrhage and superficial siderosis. For most, um, this can occur initially within first seven doses of the treatment, right? So you're giving this every two weekly. So first seven doses, you need to keep an eye on that. That's why you need to monitor MRI at those intervals I was mentioned, mentioning in the last slides. Mostly it's asymptomatic though, which is good, but rarely there is a risk of having a serious and life-threatening events like seizures or status epilepticus. But the most common symptoms seen with arias are headaches, confusion, visual changes, dizziness, nausea, and gait difficulties. So aria is one of the rare, but still it can happen. Uh, the other rare side effect is intracerebral hemorrhage. Now, Studies have shown greater than one centimeter in diameter of intracerebral hemorrhage. And one of the study uh, showed 0.7% compared to 0.1% in placebo. So we need to be mindful of that. 
there are a few cautions in like patients with um, on anticoagulants or thrombolytic agents you need to be very very cautious and the second is the apo ee4 allele right the one we just talked about so it also carries a role with intracerebral hemorrhage and the other cautions are mainly the mri findings for example if a person has prior cerebral hemorrhage of more than one centimeter in diameter you are you need to be very very cautious if there are more than four micro hemorrhages seen on mri brain or if there are these uh, findings from superficial siderosis, vasogenic edema, aneurysm, or vascular malformations. Now, the last topic is Medicare coverage. So I was uh, reading this on Alzheimer Association website. I think the yearly cost out of pocket is close to twenty-three to 25000 per year. Uh, there was a big issue recently, CMS uh, mentioned on uh, their website that Medicare will not cover this class of medication. But when I looked on their website, just recently they updated that they will. And uh, But I have mentioned that link below, you can definitely go to their website and stay updated on what the criteria are. But this link says to receive a Medicare coverage, a person should have these three things. Number one, they should be enrolled in Medicare, right? First. Number two, they should be diagnosed with MCI, mild cognitive impairment or mild Alzheimer dementia with a documented evidence of beta amyloid plaque in brain. That's why that brain MRI prior to treatment is highly, highly needed and indicated. And the last is that a physician should participate in the registry with the appropriate clinical team and follow-up care. And based on the website, it's very easy process for physicians. So friends, this was a very basic overview of this newly approved medication. Let me know what are your thoughts on this or anything that I should have added more so that I can include that in our upcoming updates. But if you're interested in learning more, please consider subscribing to Psychiatry Education Forum Academy membership. This membership is only for medical professionals. Uh, uh, please uh, go to psychiatryeducationforum.com to learn more. But thanks again for listening to me. I will see you all in our next clinically relevant discussion. Till then, you all take care and bye for now. Thank you.